It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible, hanging out a bad seat, a broken day, a bad apple with a bad attitude, hanging around a bunch of bad, another bad day, bad law, bad new, bad breath, bad attention, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Barola Palacio, right across the river through the woods from our granny's upstairs, rolling up a thumb of the Colorado rare dankness in New York City, the Big Apple. <clears throat> People dress in plastic bags, direct and travel, some kind of fashion shade that up should do that. All up in the come round, got the flood to party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown with the best of towns and tatter by brain splattered all over Manhattan. Should do be shake out. Oh, woo woo. It's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm for Pharrell along with your boy, Carver High this afternoon. Mafia running it with Hayden Fry at LTN in Kansas City. Mo, a birthday roll call. On a misery Monday, your boy Chukwuma Okafor of the Steelers, 25 today, John Runyon, 25, Jared Stidham's birthday, Cameron Payne, Yonder Diaz, Anthony Rizzo and Danilo Gallinari, pasta for everybody, Rizzo 33, Gallinari 34, Pierre Garçon 36, Roger Federer 41, Rashad Lewis 43, Anthony Beck 45, my buddy Howard Cross, double nickels, Bruce Matthews, legend, Hall of Famer, 61. Ray Fontenot, 65. Sweet Lou Dunbar, 69. Brian Sipe, you remember him with Jack Lambert rubbing mud in his face in Cleveland, 73 today. Ken Dryden, legend, Hall of Famer, 75. Frank Howard, 86. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All right, you got it all. KD telling the owner how it's going to be. Joe Sy, get rid of him. Get rid of Sean Marks. He doesn't like Marks and Nash. What does this brother like? I mean, honest to Christ. Carver High said it best. He got everything he wanted, and now he wants more. He's the one that built it. Now he wants to tear it all down. Get rid of his ass. Get rid of the cancer. Cut it out. Although I will say, I've told you a million times on this show, Sean Marks is the Oriental rug beneath us. He's the worst GM. I don't care what anybody says. He let the inmates run the asylum, and he's the one that brought in that hack coach. Legendary player, Hall of Famer, hack coach. You heard me. Durant doesn't have faith in the direction of franchise. How funny is that? Why don't you go get lost without your phone and GPS directions, my ass? Dodgers sweep the series against the Padres. Oh, I thought the Padres were going to win it all. Going to win the World Series. Can never lose a game. Greatest lineup ever. The Dodgers are your daddy. I mean to tell you, speaking of who's your daddy, the Cardinals B-slapped the Yankees all weekend in Beer Town. Very upset, Carver High. He barely wanted to do the show today. Meanwhile, Mafia laughing, driving with the windows down as the Mets have the same record as the Yankees now and will end up with a better record than the Yankees because they're a better team than the Yankees. And they have better pitching as opposed to your boy Ace Ventura over there who gives up gopher balls like we're at a wiffle ball tournament. Mets beat the Braves, take four out of five games. You got to be kidding me. Welcome all of our radio affiliates to Coast to Coast on a Monday. Sirius XM 159 is our home on satellite radio. Sports Map Radio Network, Sports Byline USA, DPAC holding it down in the city, by the way. Plus Mighty Air 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego. Near to you, wanna do you, wanna? Jacob DeGrand sets a MLB record for most Ks in his first 200 starts. He's now throwing the ball 190 miles an hour. Guy's got stuff, doesn't he? Edwin Diaz. How about this guy? He is a pimp now. Spencer Strider talking on the show today. We got it all. The Lions share coming up. Jason Scott will join us from BetMGM. We got all your weekend action, including Rocco Baldelli's meltdown. He's very angry. We got a Reese Hoskins home run. We got everything. 
cousin Sal's on the show today, plus another legend are rolling in today, Jody Mack, Jody McDonald from Whip in Philly, the fan in New York, CBS Sports Radio, our old colleague, Jody Mack on C to C today, talking Phillies, Yankees, Mets, you name it, Eagles, whatever you want, Jody will fill you up. We got more than that. Dennis Eckersley retiring at the end of the season. What broadcaster isn't retiring at the end of the season, Carver High? Everyone, they're either dying or retiring. Maybe the ones that are retiring are knowing that they're going to die, so they retire first so that they can go live it up in Portugal, smoke fatties, and chase Keeney. That's Bikini. <laughs> we got Craig Council on the show today. We got a little Yaz sighting, a little Wink Man sighting. We got a Emmanuel Rivera signing. Who? Today in Carver High, history fans are enamored with that. We got everything. Power rankings, division standings, wild card standings. We got everything. Tonight's game, seven of them. Let's make some money, honey. Matt Stafford says he's just fine. I'll believe it when I see it. We got Mike McCarthy on the show today. Kenny Pickett makes a stop on C to C. Plus, Daniel Dime Jones, Justin Herbert, Dan Campbell, one of our favorites. We got so much action today, you can chip a tooth. Tony Baselli getting into the Hall of Fame with a nice speech. Plus, Dick Vermeil, Alabama number one in the preseason coaches ball. We'll get into it. We got your hotel golf championship winner. It's Coast to Coast. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell Coast to Coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game. Take a four and a half. In game oh, live win. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Betting above the rim. How can they run this back is beyond me. What I think this is is, hey, Kyrie's comfortable coming back. We may not want to trade Kevin Durant. To me, that sounds like y'all need to pony up a little bit more. I think Kevin Durant's more likely to stay, but I still look at that January 15 day, if things are still rocky in Brooklyn, that that's when Kevin Durant may look to be moved. Betting above the rim. The morning after. What do you expect the offense to look like, Carrington, without having Tyreek Hill this year? And what impact will that have on Patrick Mahomes? You can't do what New England did, <clears throat> excuse me, in the in the early mid 2000s, where you're just putting Brady and a cast of characters together. It is a playmaker league. I think you need dynamic weapons on the outside. I don't think the Chiefs have enough to win the Super Bowl this year, but I do think they're good enough to win their division, possibly win a playoff game. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, it's come. TVG, a staple for betting on racing on television before 2017 and mobile betting, will now be renamed FanDuel Network. And the programming will focus on mainstream sports with a betting eye, looking at the positive nature of all aspects of this. There will be places for horse racing, clearly, but the channel dominated by other sports as well, though racing continues to change the meter upward as they move forward. The programming still requires significant content additions in order to make sense for 24 hours. And get this, the press release talks about the filling of the time with wagering opportunities such as pickleball, Korean football, Chinese basketball. Well. It may not be the most exciting stuff, but you can bet on it. Hey, 
My man, remember how intense I was when I was in the league? Sure. But now, I'm retired. Got everything on chill mode. Chill mode, Mr. Garnett. <laughs> Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Big ticket hitting big parlays. Whose house is it? Big ticket's Whose house? Whose house is big it? Big ticket's house. Big ticket's house. Woo! Big ticket's house. It's my house! What? <laughs> You got to get on this bet MGM app. They got great things happening there like this. You can bet $10 on any MLB game and win 200 bucks if either team hits a home run. Use the bonus code MLB home run 2022. That's MLB HR 2022. Use that code bet 10 on any game win 200 if anybody hits a home run. Carver High, uh, I got to tell you, they have the grid rolling up on the 80 incher in the family room right now oh. and your favorite pal boston is watching and chop has just informed me that there was little reaction uh at all from the dog and that he is now passing out while watching us on tv uh, very little reaction by the dog the dog has no interest in anything except yankee games which he gets excited about and also any type of food available, whether it's on a human plate or uh, dog bones, either or. It, it's anything you like. He'll eat watermelon, he'll eat anything. But TV, the, the grid, apparently not turning the dog on. The main thing is, is that it's on though, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's on. I mean, that's what we want to see. Uh, I understand on. the dog after the long weekend uh, watching the Yankees. Uh, I can understand why the dog may be a little in, uh, down in the dumps, despite being called Boston. Down uh, in the, the dog dumps. Probably, that was a tough weekend. We'll talk about that uh, in a moment. So before we start the baseball, Scotty, we have some NBA that just dropped in our lap uh, right before we started coast to coast here today. Uh, let's get into it. Sham Sharni of The Athletic reporting a meeting uh, between Nets owner Joe Sy and Kevin Durant. Durant reiterated his trade request. He informed Sy... They needs to choose between Durant or the pairing of GM Sean Marks and coach Steve Nash. Uh, he informed them that he does not have faith in the direction of the organization. The meeting was described as transparent and professional with a clear message. Keep me or keep them. Well, there you go. Uh, the next move in the chessboard by Kevin Durant today against the Brooklyn Nets. All right. So let me let me ask you this question. I'm asking you, do you really believe that a guy that has, you know, clearly done a great job as a reporter breaking stories and covering the NBA? Fair enough. I respect what he does, right? Uh, do you really believe that he's so on the inside with the owner of the Brooklyn Nets that after he had this meeting or somehow he bugged Joe Sy's office or has someone that's bugging the office because I don't believe for one minute that this guy knows what was said in a closed door meeting with Kevin oh, Durant and the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, Joe Sy. I do not believe he knows one lick of truth to this story that he said, it's either me or them. He doesn't like the direction of the organization who in their right mind, even if you make $40 million a year as a, as a professional athlete, who in their right mind talks that way to the billionaire owner of the team? No one. I don't care what anyone says. I don't believe the story. I do believe he wants to be traded. So what I would do to accommodate him is I would trade him to any number of five of the worst teams in the league, all the worst franchises available, literally find the worst team in the league and literally dump his ass there because this guy is so painful i would rather have a migraine headache every day of my life than deal with kevin durant he is not worth it he is old he's one injury away from being done i don't care what anybody says they had his ass in brooklyn and what did they do 
besides absolutely nothing. He didn't win Jack Shack while he was in Brooklyn. The only time the guy ever won in his life, he didn't win at Texas. He didn't win in Oklahoma City. And he only won because he played with Steph Curry. That's the only time he ever won anything. His days of winning titles are over. He's another Achilles away from being finished. I would no more keep him than fly a kite. He is the ultimate lymphoma in the NBA. He is the cancer that keeps on giving. Screw Kevin Durant. Why do you think I call him Cream Puff Reaper? He is such a pain in the ass. That I know. But I don't believe a word that was said about this alleged meeting and how professional it was. I think Sham is full of shack. He doesn't know anything. Uh, oh, he's on the inside, huh? He got a bug in the room? He got a camera in the room? Shut the F up. I'm sick of listening to guys that try to get attention for themselves by making up stories. And you didn't tell him I said so. I'll beat his ass too. I don't even know him. I'll beat his ass. I don't know. I mean, Duran is, is such a D that I kind of believe it. I, I, I do kind of believe that this happened. Like, I, and, if, and, for, and for him to get this information or somewhat from this lunch or dinner, whatever this was, um, it probably came from the Steve Nash, Sean Marks camp to make Durant look like uh, the absolute D in this situation. If, if it did, that's probably where it trickled out of. Uh, if it's the case. I think Marks asked for this. He asked he for did. this. He did this. He dug his own grave. How about this? I cannot fathom a guy that has butchered a team worse than this guy. And then they just gave him an extension. That they, they just gave him more money and more years. I think this guy should be running the Australian national team. Go back down under where you came from. You've done nothing except butcher the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, honest to Christ, they're as bad as the Knicks. They're, they're both so bad. You wonder why it smells in New York City where I live? It's not the garbage. It's the Knicks and Nets. It's true. Uh, and, it, and it is hard, as you said, for Durant to sit there and possibly say that the direction. He literally created the direction He's of the, the franchise GPS. When, when he went there. He picked, he picked the coach. He wanted Nash to be the coach. He picked Kyrie as his wingman. He told Marks to trade all the draft picks for James Harden. He got rid of basically all the young core that was there before he arrived. He's done it they all. Lost, you know? They lost 18 <laughs> of 21, and the guy scores 30 a game, and they still lose. You know why? They haven't played defense since they were playing at Brendan Byrne Arena in New Jersey in the swamps. That team plays no defense ever, and they are a joke. Let's stop acting like, you know what this is? This is the same bull shack that we put up with every week on this show, listening to people tell us stories about the Los Angeles Lakers. And we never stop talking about the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers are literally dirty toilet water. That's how bad they are. They are dirty, unflushed toilet water but they get talked about like they've won 15 straight NBA championships. Do you notice they never talk about the Warriors ever? Do you ever hear anyone talking about the Warriors after they just won their fourth in eight years? They don't talk about them. They showed Clay on the beach in the Bahamas writing fourth championship in the sand. That's the only story I've heard. But we hear about these two garbage franchises. I'm telling you, Jeannie, someone hacked her Twitter. LeBron won't sign his new extension. AD's having great workouts in the best shape of his life. The guy can't stay on the court for five effing minutes. He is peanut brittle city and Kevin Durant is cancer. You can have it. You know, I'll give Kyrie at least this. He hadn't said a word throughout this whole yeah. thing. Kyrie, he had a, a, a run in the city the other day, like a charity run, more than a run it was called. He's done good things, hasn't opened his fat mouth for once.
Trevor Lawrence, coast Lawrence to coast. Uh, let's face it, he was awful in his rookie year. Awful. But, you know, they blamed it all on Urban Meyer. And I got to tell you, uh, I don't. I blame it on him. Like, he's the one playing in the game. Now, you can say the coach is terrible all you want. Good for you. I mean, the guy was a mess. And I'm sure he'll be better. They've already crowned him the best second-year guy. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Betting above the rim. As much as we think it's got to be about LeBron, it's got to be even more about AD. He's got to carry the load. He's got to have that season where he takes himself inside as a small ball five and attack people, and he's got to shoot it better than I think 17%. He will look for a huge bounce back year out of Anthony Davis with a chance to win the MVP. Betting above the rim. The early line. But can we all please just admit they should have kept him in in Minnesota? Like, is everybody okay now to admit that it was a ridiculous thing that he was taken out in that baseball game? To put a perfect game under the belt would have been magical. And again, Donnie, this is not the first time he has been injured this season. Can everybody just admit they should have let Kershaw go for the perfect game? Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Yo, we know how competitive the AFC is going to be. The NFC feels like there might be some other areas for value. Where do you see that on the board entering 2022? I do believe that the Vikings have a lot of offensive pieces here that can be really scary, and that division's very weak. Uh, even the Packers are a little weaker year over year. The defense is very good, but when you take Devontae Adams out of a team, it's still something to consider. The Sports Grid Network. The bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by Bet MGM. You know, I'll say this much, Carver High. Seriously, uh, no matter if all that's true or not is irrelevant to me. I I'll give him this, though. He's right about one thing, uh, the direction of that franchise. He doesn't like it. Well, who could like it when it's as bad as it is? I mean, they got swept by the Celtics in the playoffs, which was, I mean, it's humiliating. And I know they went to the finals, but don't tell me they should have been swept by the Celtics. And then... Uh, and then when the season ends, they both want to get traded and everything else. And I don't know how many times I've said that Nash is just a famous guy that stands on the sideline. That's all he is. And I do not believe in that general manager for one second. I, I am done with anybody trying to sell me this guy's accolades. I think it is the biggest crock of shack ever that this guy gets this giant. And he just got extended, I said. I mean, it never ends. They just they reward failure. They reward failure. They give tons of money to players that fail and GMs that fail in sports. It happens all the time. Baseball players can't hit 210 and they're making $20 million. I mean, it makes no sense to me. A guy uh, that runs a club like the Nets into the ground. I mean, they're into the ground. I mean, have you ever seen, I don't remember ever seeing a team with that much talent lose 18 of 21 games and people start blaming it on COVID and everything else. I'll give him this. He's right about one thing. 
They are, the direction is straight to hell in a bucket. I hope they're enjoying the ride because with that guy in charge and that coach, they're not going anywhere. They are not going anywhere near an NBA finals anytime. And, and I'm literally with those two gone, because they're going to get rid of both of them. They won't sniff it for 20 years, 20 years. They will. What, when are they going to the NBA finals? In what world are they going to the NBA finals? with Nick Claxton and Ben Simmons? Stop. Allegedly, the three most likely destinations still Boston, Toronto and Miami. Allegedly, uh, those are the three most likely destinations. What are they going to give us? Max Struess? Struess, your boy. Uh, that's right. The hero sandwich. Get Tyler Hero uh, up there in Brooklyn. That That's value right there. That kid's body uh, it won't is, hold up either. He's too white. It is, it is time. For the lion's share, Scotty, of course, uh, brought to you by BetMGM. Did you like all those dingers on Friday night? I mean, was that yeah. enough for you with Vladdy and Schwarber and everybody going yard on Friday to send you into the weekend? Uh, that was pretty good. A couple of taters uh, on a Friday. We start ends. a new week. We start a new week with the lion's share tonight. Uh, of course, only seven games, Scotty, but that does not mean we cannot find some plays. We will start with the Orioles and the Jays tonight. Jordan Lyles going for the birds uh his total four and a half over plus 120 under minus 175 he's over actually in three of his last five starts he had seven strikeouts last time out against the texas rangers give me lyle's over tonight just barely scotty with a five against the jays tonight yeah, I hope you're right. I'm going to go under. I don't believe he can strike out that many Blue Jays. Uh, Chapman's been hitting. Vladdy's been hitting. Bichette hits well at Camden. I'm going to say no to the under. Even though I want him to get some strikeouts, as we'll see later in the lion's share, I also expect him to give up some runs. Next, let's go to the Basset Hound out at City Field tonight. The Mets Riding high after taking four out of five from the Braves this weekend. The Basset Hound, five and a half against the Reds tonight, Scotty. Over minus 125, under minus 115. The Basset Hound, under in four of his last six starts, this number of five and a half. Well, look, uh, the Reds are awful. The Mets are on fire. The place is filling up every night. They have the best record in baseball basically uh, since the All-Star break. They've caught the Yankees. They have destroyed the Braves, who are now six and a half back. I am on Bassett Hound over tonight, and the Mets will continue to pound crappy teams uh, like the Reds after they just kicked the Braves' ass. You've got to keep trouncing on crap in front of you, which is the Cincinnati Reds. Absolutely. Next, we go to Cole Irvin of the A's. Why do we go to Cole, Scotty? Four and a half is his number tonight against the Angels, who absolutely suck right now. Minus 105 to the over, minus 135 to the under. Now, Cole has been under a lot. He's got four in both starts against the Angels this year, but I'm taking him over tonight. I'm taking my chance with Cole against Anaheim at home at the Ashtray, minus 105. Yeah, I'll take a, a shot on that flyer uh, as an over because uh, the Angels are glad bag city. Season over, oh, yeah. uh, happiness over, everybody. I mean, they're barely holding on to Otani. Trout hasn't played. They lose every game they play. I mean, I'm on, I'm on the over. I'll take it. Uh, and finally, big series out in Seattle tonight. The Yankees looking to get off the deck after getting swept in St. Louis, they play the Seattle Mariners. Same pitching matchup as last week in the Bronx. You have Jamison shots of Tyone against Gilbert Grape. Tyone, five and a half tonight, plus 110 to the over, minus 160 to the under. He's gone over this, Scotty, in his last two starts, including six against the Mariners last time he pitched in the middle of last week. I like the over. Yeah, I'm going to go under here because the Yankees are falling on their faces every single day now. Uh, they're, you know, on this horrible skid over their last 25 games. Uh, what is it? Nine and 16. Nine and 16. I mean, they yeah. are, they've lost, what, five in a row? That hasn't happened all year. Neither had four, now five. Uh, Gilbert beat them last week in the Bronx, and he had 
uh, the number there. Not here. It's in Seattle tonight. I don't even like the Yankees' chances. I like him to go under, and I like Gilbert to beat him. Let's go to the Taters now. Home run props on BetMGM for the lion's share. We will start with Francisco Lindor of the Mets. Like you said, Scotty, they got to keep mashing these awful teams. Lindor's got three homers in his last 10 games. He had eight hits against the Braves over the weekend, and he just missed a couple of homers, Scotty. He had one that was right off the top of the wall, plus 333 for Lindor tonight. Yeah, I like him to hit one tonight. I like Alonzo to hit one tonight. I like Vogelback to hit one tonight. I mean, they're playing the Little Vogelback, League team. So, baby. I mean, the Mets should come out swinging at City and hit a bunch of home runs tonight. I mean, they did it all weekend against the Braves. Why not keep doing it? Let's go, baby. Next, we'll go to Wrigley. The Nationals and the Cubs, Scotty, not the sexiest matchup on the card, but we said we were going to keep our eye on Luke Voigt when he got traded to the Nationals and that he was going to rake a little bit in a bad situation. He hit his first homer with the Nats over the weekend. He's got Scott. He's 6 for 13 since joining them. The Cubs suck, plus 240 for Voigt to go out at Wrigley tonight. And it's a sandbox. So I'm with you on uh, Voigt hitting one out. And, and just for good measure, how about he said... Well, it's a little uh, bit weird for me since I've never played for a loser before. Welcome to D.C. <laughs> he said, I, I'm playing for a loser now, so I got to come to grips with it. I told you, if this guy starts hitting home runs over the next two months, he's going to make a lot of money in D.C. He'll be the biggest bat in town because they have no other talent. They got rid of all of it. Uh, next, the Buckos are in the desert tonight to take on the Diamondbacks, Scotty. Christian Walker has been very good this year. Three homers in his last 10. He had one yesterday. He's got 26 on the season. He's been a good tater play, plus 375 at home against the Buccos tonight. Why not? The Pirates on the road, or they forget their clothes, their underwear, their bats, <laughs> their gloves. I'm surprised they have a plane. I keep thinking of the little kid that took the picture with the owner. Sell the team. I mean, honestly, Sell that's how embarrassing they are. Oh, your boy. Uh, and finally, uh, we're going to go one last time with Judge tonight. And why? Judge had a ton of hits over the weekend against the Cardinals, Scotty. He just couldn't get him over the wall. We know that he gets hot at any time. Had some homers against the Mariners last week, plus 155 to get things going for Judge. Yeah, I'll go with you there. I hope he hits a home run uh, in every game this week. I mean, he's <laughs> capable. Would. He's got 10 uh you know what what did he have 10 and 16 rbis and uh yep. since the all-star break the guy's been raking he's the only guy on the team that hits by the way i just want to mention i was watching uh joey gallo on saturday and sunday night still sucking as much as ever joey uh this guy went to la they're already booing him and he not only does he strike out every time he's a bat but the bat doesn't come within three feet of the ball no. he is finished in major league baseball he will not finish the season with the dodgers he sucks so bad he'll be dfa'd within three weeks he's finished in major uh, he's league real baseball. bad the guy uh, can't thankfully hit. thankfully somebody else's problem now all right the game props for tonight some big plus money game props for you scotty let's go blue jays and the orioles tonight how about a lot of runs here i'm going big ball scotty both teams to score five or more runs at plus 290 a lot of runs with the jays and the o's why not? Let's go. We only got seven Next. games. Let's go for the throat. Next, we said the Mets would score a ton. Mets win over eight and a half in the game, plus 130. They can get over the eight and a half by themselves tonight against the Reds, Scotty. I'm with you there, too. It's going to be ugly. And finally, the A's at the ashtray against the Angels. A win for Oakland and under Eight and a half at plus 190. Under eight and a half, A's win with Irvin on the mound. Why not? Because I bet on the A's, so I'll go with you on the under as well. Let's go. Let's make more money. All we do is make people money on the, on the share. You know the lion share. That lion, the lion will bite everyone except us because all we do is feed the people with money. There you go. The lion share. Bet MGM, baby. The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full need, circle. Uh, all their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The morning after. In your mind, Arm, where we are right now in early August, is it still a two-team race to win the AL? You know, I, I think it's one of those situations where it's baseball, and if you can always sprinkle on another team, I think there's always a shot, right? And I, I look at the Mariners and what they've been able to do, and there's definitely some value there. You go get Luis Castillo, and you get healthy internally as well. Kyle Lewis is back. You also are ready to get Mitch Haniger back. That's going to be a huge, huge boost for the offense. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. National Predators always have been very creative. One of the great ideas of Sunbelt franchises, the logo, the entertainers on ice and partners. How about this, though? A relationship with Austin P to sell marketing and sponsorship rights for their facility not too far away. Result? A million one in sponsorships, in events, in generated increased revenue for the university. Sna Stashville and Smashville coming together. The idea of buying power because of the Predators and new inventory because of Austin P. And the result has been positive for all concerned. Looking for a model where universities partner with the professional franchises in that community in order to generate some significant content revenue and opportunities. Sports Professor Riccardo, Daily Numbers Game. All right, for all back on Coast to Coast, on a Monday afternoon, we bring in Jason Scott, our boy, the VP of trading at BetMGM in Las Vegas, in Sin City, the Magada Hub, at MGM. And uh, Jason, good to see you to start the week off again. Uh, let's start with how much did the odds change for the Cards, Mets, Yankees, and Braves after uh, their big series this weekend that obviously did not go well for the Yankees and Braves? Yeah, it's interesting. The The Yankees' price looks like it's baked in. It didn't move one inch, uh, despite them getting swept. The, there was some money from the cards. They were sort of uh, plus 4,000 or plus 3,000. The Mets plus 600 or plus 550. But uh, the Braves the Braves went from uh, plus 900 to plus 1,200. But, yeah, the Yankees plus 375 solid. We're still taking money. So you saw DeGrom throwing – uh, you know, just absolute gas, and no one can even touch him. And they have Scherzer doing the same thing. He had 11 strikeouts. When you see those two pitching and Diaz closing the way he is and the bats that they have, how can you not think that they are a dangerous team to deal with in the playoffs? A hundred percent. I mean, we're almost getting down to the stage now where where ninety five percent of the money we're seeing is coming for the top four teams in the betting, the two New York teams, 
the Astros and, and the Dodgers. Uh, I can't remember a season where so far out that four teams have sort of leveled out and looked to be at a different a different level to the others, even 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 after watching the Cards and the Yankees this weekend. It's that close. I, I have to ask you. I, I said earlier on the show that I think the Mets are going to end up better than the Yankees when it's all said and done record wise, as if that matters. Because when you get to the playoffs, you're all O and O, right? And you got to win games. And it becomes about pitching. But when you see the Yankees getting their ass beat by the Astros and the Mariners, I said on Coast to Coast last week, I think Friday, right to Carver High, I said, the Yankees aren't winning the World Series. They can't even beat the Astros or Mariners. How the hell are they going to win the World Series when those two teams seem to own them? And there's going to be more of it tonight. Well, I... I've learned not to fall in love with streaks in baseball. You know, 20 games ago, Houston were absolutely flying and everyone was saying, you know, they were the team to beat that could come. Uh, I think, you know, there's, there's still 55 games to go. Let's see it play out. I can see a way that the Yankees could, uh, could the hitting, hitting comes back and it's not just judged around the, around the playoffs and different things happen. Were you surprised? I, I got to tell you, documented, I bet on the Dodgers – every night against the Padres this weekend and cashed. Uh, everyone thinks the Padres are winning the World Series because they got Juan Soto. And let's face it, Bell, Hayter, Drury. I won't deny they got a sick lineup. But when the guys from up north kick your ass every time you play, you're not winning anything. Yeah, well, you didn't have to sweat too much on it to cash those tickets, did you? They sort of, the Yankees, uh, sorry, the Dodgers look to be in control most games. Look, yeah, I'm with you. The Padres have got a long way to go. Their pitching is not seem to be at the level of the other top four teams. Uh, Bell and Soto have, have switched, switched sides of the country, but both are taking a while to get going. I can't see them challenging. Do you think, uh, just personally, that the Mets are the team that is going to end up playing the Dodgers for the pennant? Yes, I do. That's what I'm I think the about pitching, I think you said it. I think... I think with Scherzer, DeGrom, you know, they're going to be hard to beat in a series, aren't they? What did the odds, did they flip much when the Cardinals passed the Brewers? And to me, it seemed like the Brewers quit when uh, the front office traded Hayter. The players said, you know what? Screw you. We're going to let the Pirates sweep us. Uh, that's what it looked like to me. Like they just threw games. It was a peculiar decision to let him go. Yeah, Cardinals in the minus 200, Brewers plus 160. Uh, this time last week, they, there was parity there. So, yeah, all, all the momentums with the Cardinals, they probably picked up. You know, I thought I think most people would have gone going into that series with the Yankees, uh, picking one, winning one of three would have been would have been a, the expected result. They won three, so that's probably two games over what we we tallied. I mean, honestly, I was watching those games and losing. DeJong's been in the minors for two months, and this guy's killing you. I mean, honestly, I was, you should have heard the language coming from my house when I was watching this bum rack and home runs against them. I wanted to puke. Uh, is Goldschmidt still your favorite for the MVP? Because he's kind of like fizzled a little, hasn't he? Yeah, he's minus 140. I think Austin Riley plus 550, Freddie Freeman plus 700. Uh, I might be right. I might be wrong, but I seem to remember two weeks ago, Carver High. Being very strong on Austin Riley when he was double figure odds, so he's moving in. Goldsmith's got out a little bit, but he he still seems the one to beat. We are both on Riley to steal it from uh, Goldschmidt, and we've been watching this guy tearing it up all year. He's been incredible, but he didn't do anything against the Mets, so he needs to have a Martini. Spencer Strider, the favorite for Rookie of the Year in the National League. Some people think he's crying. Uh, when he's talking about uh, it doesn't matter if they lose to the Mets now. All that matters is October. I'll give him that. And then last week, what, do you have a 13-strikeout game? I mean, this guy's got this thing locked up, doesn't he? He's got it locked up. I mean, I probably didn't think we needed him to come out the way he did on the weekend after being taken out after two and two-thirds innings and six hits and suggest they were lucky. But, um, yeah, he's, he's minus 165, Michael Harris plus 225, and Anel Cruz. 
plus 1,200. It looks a race in two. Uh, we don't want Strider. We'd much prefer to see Harris win. I'd, I want to see O'Neill Cruz. My boy Cruz will get involved there with a late push. Get him slide in with a couple of more bombs into the river. That's what I'm talking about. My team's only 1,000 games under 500. Don't mind me, uh, Jason. Anyway, let me ask you about the Padres again. How much action came in on them after all those deals? Yeah, look, we started seeing action probably 24 hours earlier when it was rumored that um, Soto was in, was heading west. Um, I obviously thought he looked good in that beautiful brown uniform of the Padres. Uh, sort of uh, plus 1,500, got down to plus 1,100. It's gone back again after, after what we saw against the Dodgers. And like I said before, they're still a fair bit off the pace. What are the odds uh, right now of have they changed at all with Carver High and I moving to uh, suites in the MGM Grand permanently and doing the show from the sports book right there be between the Ale House and the book? What are the odds now? Well, they were minus 50,000 last week and now they're more, uh, uh, sorry, plus 50,000. I think they've moved to plus 100,000. I'm, I'm not getting any traction. <laughs> All right, you hear that? You got to keep an eye on that for me, buddy. Uh, who's the betting favorite to take the AL Central as if it matters? I mean, if the Twins win, you know they'll lose to the Yankees. Yeah, the Twins are the favorite, plus 125, plus 160, the White Sox, plus 280, the Guardians. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Even though it's a close battle, we're not seeing much money. It's kind of like the Who Cares Cup. <laughs> Who cares, Cup? It's like watching Man U play soccer on Saturday. Eight different yeah. teams have double-digit win totals for this NFL season now on BetMGM. How many do you think actually get double-digit wins? Yeah, well, I mean, this is something I hadn't given one second thought of until you just mentioned it. Um, last year, there were 12 teams that won 10 games. Now, remembering our double-digit win to Games are probably 10 and a half, so you're probably talking 11 games. I think we'll get something like 10 or 11. We'll get over 12. I think we got three in the AFC East last year. I can't see I can't see the Cardinals repeating that. Uh, I think we'll probably get another one in the AFC West. They're too strong against the others. And there's a couple of couple of divisions where I can see two. I think we'll get 11, get over, over the 10, but I only think we'll get nine, cover the, um, cover the 10 and a half to get 11 wins. There you go. Uh, so did you guys get a bunch of action at the start of the EPL? Nothing like a thrilling uh, Crystal Palace game to kick off the season on Friday afternoon. That's like hanging out uh, with people that don't have any liquor in the fridge and ask you if you want to watch softball, like Crystal Palace for your opener. I mean, the Gunners beat them too zip, but honest to Christ, can they not get a better game than that to kick off their season? Yeah, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Look, we do. We see a lot of interest. Actually, we see a lot of interest in these four, first four weeks prior to college football taking off uh, in its entirety. Um, we see most of the money comes in the games for the big four, Liverpool, Arsenal, and the two Manchester teams. Um, so it's always good to see to see Liverpool get beaten and a draw as well. So do you think City wins it again with Holland? He had a great start uh, with a couple of goals in their win, two zip over ham sandwich. I think it's a really interesting year. We're going to send all the best players to Qatar for two months to play in 120 degree heat and have all the pressure of the World Cup. They're going to, the ones that, the teams that make the final are going to come back exhausted. Uh, and then, then they'll start the uh, regular season again. This is a year where something odd could happen and, Maybe that's just me being an odds maker wanting it to happen. But if ever there's something funny is going to happen, it's going to be because we've got a World Cup in the in the winter or in the in the summer in Qatar. So it is in the winter because we really don't care about their schedule or their uh, holidays. Yeah. But it's during our Thanksgiving to Christmas window. How much action will there be in Vegas at BetMGM with people betting on the World Cup? I would think it's crazy. Well, Black Friday is the first game Team USA play, and they play England. So that will be the biggest biggest betting soccer match in the history of this country, given where sports betting's grown, given these two teams both going in with, you know, both, well, England obviously think they want to get out of the group and maybe into the, you know, progress through the series. The Americans have a genuine chance to get out of the group. So 
I think that game that game will break all records, and it wouldn't surprise me if it holds more than the final. But yeah, so, I can't wait. It's going to be enormous. So this year, after Thanksgiving dinner at the BetMGM buffet, uh, you know, right next to the Starbucks, there, when you roll out of there after seven plates of food, you're not going to go to the Best Buy and over to Macy's shopping this year, late night and midnight. You're going to settle into an England match with the USA and and stay right at home, snuggle by the fire and bet on soccer. Is that what you're telling me? Well, most most Thanksgiving nights I'm I'm in the fetal position again because the Lions have lost and we we and we get stripped. But uh, this year, after the Lions have lost and we get stripped, I'll be able to get it back on Team USA England the next day and cheer for them. The Lions are the worst thing that ever happened to America, ever. And Thanksgiving every year is the same thing. I would rather watch my mother-in-law drink a bottle of Pinot Grigio and start cussing at me than watch the Lions play football. Any action on that Hill win on a Saturday night over Santos? Anybody bet on that? Yeah, they did. Most of the money, well, sorry, most of the money was for Hill, but there was enough money for Santos, the outsider. The outsiders are always well bet in these MMA contests. We got, we got some, we made a small profit. I just want you to know, Mafia makes an additional 70% of his income betting on men fighting inside a cage. He's very good betting on people that kick each other in the face. Jason, I love you. Have a great week. Say hi to everybody at BetMGM for me. Thank you, Scotty. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line. And we either go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Betting above the rim. To me, I think this is about LeBron trying to angle in his way to see what he wants with the Lakers, i.e. Kyrie Irving. What's going on with Kyrie? Are we getting him now? Are we waiting till the season starts? He's in silence sometimes. And I think what he's doing is he's trying to figure out what's his next step, which probably includes playing with Bronny. Betting above the rim. The Bostonian versus the book. You spend all this time, take your money, go to the window, make the bet, get the app, make the bet. You make all these bets. And then you come back because somebody asked you a question about your, oh, you mushed my bet. Oh, oh, you just, you know, you just did it. You just did it to me. Oh, man. Like, are you a clown? Like, like, did, 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 take the makeup off for me first. The Bostonian versus the book. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only 
on Sports Grid. All right, Carver, I, I couldn't believe uh, watching, like, the Dodgers just own the Padres all weekend. All weekend long. All it took was five days after the Padres got Soto and all these guys. It took five days for everybody to basically be like, all right, they got no shot against the Dodgers uh, or, or winning the World Series or winning the National League or anything like that. That's it. That's all it took. Less than a week. Uh, getting swept in the fashion that they did in Los Angeles by the Dodgers. Um, I don't think anybody's a believer. They got a lot of work to do in October to change people's minds. That's for sure. Last night, Scotty, 4 nothing was the final to finish off the sweep in Los Angeles. Big night for Cody Bellinger. Not one, but two home runs on ESPN. Bellinger. Oh, my the left God. Side. Can he do it again? Yes, he did. Cody Bellinger, three for three tonight. His second home run. Now the number nine hitter now has 15 on the season. The Dodgers lead it 3 nothing. You remember last year when they were going to get rid of him? And they were going to write him off, and yeah. he was terrible, and he, he, you know, he turned into a bomb and everything else. Look at him now. Uh, it is amazing. He has not quite been the same uh, since that MVP winning season a few years back, but he has come up with some big hits for the Dodgers, especially over the last four to six weeks. Uh, and the Dodgers, once again, Scotty, they are rolling in the National League. So a big weekend for them. We will come back and get into the rest of the baseball from the weekend, including a very bad weekend for the Yankees in St. Louis. Uh, yesterday, they scored a bunch of runs. But they sure couldn't stop any. Saturday, they couldn't score anything, even though they didn't allow any. Really strange weekend for the Yankees in St. Louis uh, as they now have their longest losing streak of the season going to Seattle, Scotty. We'll talk about the Yankees and the cards when we come back. I wanted to puke watching those games. I watched every inning of every game, and it was just a, an atrocity. And I think they're in big trouble going into Seattle tonight. 